Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Farmcast. And we're here to talk football again. Week one is in the books. Some of our predictions hit. Some of them might not have. But hey, we're here to uh, discuss everything uh, everything that happened in week one and will happen in week two. Uh, we got a lot right, and we're going to nail a little bit more. Um, so good way to start it. Should we go over uh, something we all learned from week one? Start us sure. off. I'll go first. Um, something I learned from week one. It's something I kind of knew, but now I'm very uh, sure about. I kind of hate Kyle Shanahan. Okay. Yeah, um, speak on it. Yeah. 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 He's just – He's. I want to get this out of the way. He's a good coach. Very good coach. That, that is. This is nothing to do with that. He's just a fucking prick. He has this, like, ten. I, he strikes me as a guy – who really just wants to be the next Bill Belichick so bad. And so he plays all these, like, little mind games, the media, really, like, coy, like, thinking he's being cute answers or deflection answers. Like, specifically talking about, like, you got Brandon Ayuk, uh, a guy who balled in his rookie year, first-round pick. He comes in, and you're giving him, like, no snaps on offense – in order to play undrafted Trent Sherfield, okay. And then he says after the game, he's like, yeah, you know, we're just trying to manage injuries. He had him returning punts. What? No, you weren't. Like, just a bold lie. It's just, a, it, it's so annoying. And then you have the Trey Sermon shit, who is the number two running back in OTAs. He's the number two running back in training camp. He's the number two running back in the preseason. And then all of a sudden he's inactive. For no reason. And then he also says after the game, yeah, there's no hierarchy for the running backs. He's just he's just annoying. And I feel like he does this stuff just for the sake of being like the next like smart guy coach, even though everybody already kind of thinks he is. It's just it's frustrating. I'm kind of sick of Kyle Shanahan. What do you feel I'm in this on way? That. If what do you feel this way if you didn't own Trey Sermon in fantasy football? Look, I'm just as bad about Brandon Ayuk. I have no I have no stake in that. Listen, oh, the fact I own Trey Sermon, besides the point. Yeah, um, so Brandon Ayuk was one of my wide receivers uh, drafted in my Eliminator League, which if you don't know what that is, uh, it's a league where you only draft <laughs> starters, right? Um, and Brandon Ayuk scored me zero points, and I scored the least amount of points out of everybody in week one, and I got to wear this bad boy around work today the entire day, <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. Fuck Kyle Shanahan. on the audio side, he is wearing a big badge around his loser. neck that just says loser with a, a hand L in, uh, for the L. That's, yeah. that's tough. Yeah, very tough. It's a nice yeah. medal. Out. Yeah, I'm out on Kyle Shanahan, absolutely. And, <laughs> and I'm out of the Eliminator League, yes, yes. That's that's the worst to go out week one. That is the absolute worst. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice medal, um, though. Like, that looks it is really nice. nice. Medal. Like, yeah, it is, yeah. It looks awesome. <laughs> Bobcat Weekly Eliminator. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a nice piece. I'm glad I, I'm upset I have to wear it today, but you know, right. yeah. it's got to be. And somebody. then, and then they almost fucking blow that game to the Lions. What what happened? Uh, Goof got hot. Yeah, I mean the Lions looked really great for the last seven minutes of that game. To be honest, they really did. Something tells me that is not going to be a consistent theme for the Lions. I, yeah, I agree. I don't think it will either. But that, for the last quarter, like they looked like a legitimate they football good. team. Yeah. So who else learned something? Um, I learned something, and okay. again, like you, this is something I kind of already knew, and it also has to do with a head coach. Um, like, I don't know why. Like me and a lot of other people, like I don't know why the consensus was so down on the Steelers this year. Uh, because, and I know it's early, but like Mike Tomlin is like a truly incredible coach and he, he always has his guys ready to play big games. Um, if I don't know if this is actually statistically proven, but I feel like they win or cover every single time they're an underdog. Um, they're just a very good team. And Mike Tomlin, uh, I think he's going to get lost as like, maybe not like forgotten, but he's not going to be remembered amongst like the. Sean McVay's Bill Belichick's of like his time and his coaching period. He's going to get kind of lost in history. Mike Tomlin is just 
a leader of men. I swear to God, like that. Mm-hmm. Not, you ever hear him talk, you just get fired up right away. And I don't know. Yeah, Mike Tomlin just like weirdly goes through these stretches where he gets so much more flack than he ever deserves. He's won multiple Super Bowls. He's taken that team to the playoffs countless fucking times. And he's done it with all sorts of different personnel. Like, I don't, I never understood why he gets any flack. I don't know why either. I think I think he's incredibly underrated in the fact that he was able to keep Antonio Brown and Lev Bell under wraps for yeah. as long as he did, you know? He's, like, consistently in that, like, top tier of coaching. There's a reason he's coached so long. Right. But yeah, no, yeah. I, I've always us, loved Mike Tomlin. And he gave us the we do not care sound clip on yes. TikTok. So, yes. I mean, yeah. what a legend. Yeah. And he um, looks exactly like the surgeon from House, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes, he does. He looks, yeah, he does. I mean, it's, it's pretty it's similar. Yeah. Win. Yeah. He also looks the exact same as like the first time I've ever seen him. That man is not oh, aged a day. Not, no, not a second. Yeah. yeah. The uh, Steelers, I'll tell you what, though, that defense is, I, like, I already knew it was going to be great, but scary like, good. holy shit. They went into Buffalo and they completely shut down uh josh allen and what i don't understand is like so they signed melvin ingram really late yep. and i always thought he was really good i know zach i think you brought this up before about melvin ingram just being out there for some reason and they sign him and he's a complete monster and they're paying him like three four million dollars it, yeah it boggles my mind it was, yeah, so it was actually weird that he was like out there and like anyone anyone yeah i was actually looking at their depth chart and he is not listed as like a starter on their depth chart and i thought i was like what well, i thought melvin ingram was really good but uh yeah i guess it's just one of those things where i mean he's just a rotational guy i guess you know what i mean i did see one thing where because i think that when they where they list their starters it's in like their base defense okay and i, I read something on twitter that basically said the Steelers did not play a single snap of actual base defense. Oh, oh so that might yeah. explain part of that. Yeah. Um, okay. But good God, you got him and TJ Watt, Cameron Hayward. Oh my God. Yeah. On to it. I mean, it's, it's yeah. ridiculous that that team is that defense is going to carry all year. If big Ben can show any signs of life, um, that'd be great. I don't know like what to make of that offense yet because I think the Buffalo defense might be pretty good too. So it's hard to say whether Big Ben was just big ass or if they actually were just up against a good defense on the road and it gets right. better here. I think that's it. I don't think we saw what their offense actually looks like because it's going to have a lot more Najee Harris. He was in on every single snap. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I saw that. To get more Najee He's Harris. going yeah. to be on every single snap going forward. So they'll they'll use him a lot more. So I don't think we saw what that offense actually looks like. So Steelers are looking uh, – I had them as a wild card, but they're looking better than what I had anticipated. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I, want, uh, I learned – uh, about two things uh, that I'd like to share. The first one, um, Mark Ingram is still elite, as oh, we all yeah. saw. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that needs no more explanation. Uh, the Mark other Ingram, one. <laughs> hold on one second. Mark Ingram had 26 carries that game. There's not a chance Mark Ingram has another game like that for the rest of his career. <laughs> that man, he got 26 touches. Good for was- him inactive last year for the majority of those games like what the hell good for mark hey yeah, he looked like he lost some weight yeah i'm gonna be honest he might change the man. number he lost some yeah. literal weight yeah. everybody with i've noticed that everybody who has that single digit <clears throat> number looks way faster yeah <laughs> big time way cooler too oh yeah like jamar chase when he's got the number one on looks like the fastest man i've ever seen yeah um but the other one the, the other thing that i learned um I like to call things what they are when you see them immediately, even when you're wrong. And, you know, I'll admit I was wrong, and I'll admit Kyle was right. The Titans look fucking awful. Like, I'll flip right away. They look really, really bad. I I can't really think of a redeeming quality uh, in them right now. I thought that offense would be lights out. They are literally, the lights are off in that building, in that offense, because there's nothing there. That. That team is, I wanted to bring it up, but obviously it's not something I exactly learned, but they, uh, their problem is they're just such a one trick pony. And that trick is play action. 
Mm. So if you're down in the beginning of the game, like, because that defense is terrible. It's really, really bad, and they get no pass rush. So you combine that, and when you're down early in the game, nobody's biting on play action anymore. They're going to – they want you to run if you're down with double-digit scores. Nobody's going to bite on play action, and that's the only trick in Ryan Tannehill's arsenal. So I think that team is just set up for failure unless Mar- – or unless Mark Ingram. Oh, God, now you got me really messed up. <laughs> oh, as Derrick Henry, like, falls from the first drive on. Good chance they does that, but if that doesn't happen, that team is completely screwed. I think they could still win the division. Like, I That's think they still could. Because yeah. the Colts not look good. Yeah, I, I, I think they could. Uh, I wouldn't eliminate them from playoffs yet, but they don't look like a, a, anything special. Um, that being said, on the other side of that ball, I'm not buying – I'm not going to freak out about what the Cardinals did either because – from what I understand, I, I, I didn't realize that uh, this was Taylor Luan's, like, first game coming back from an ACL, and I guess he was, like, rotating in and out. So that at least partially explains the five Chandler Jones sacks, which is such a Madden number. It's just – it doesn't even oh, yeah. feel real. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't really – because I don't buy J.J. Watt staying healthy all year. It's just I'm, – I'm, I'm in very wait-and-see mode with the Cardinals. The Chandler Jones MVP season has begun. Five sacks per game. Jesus I was Christ, looking at uh, like award odds today because mm-hmm. I wanted to see how stuff like jumped around. And he went from God knows where, and he's like number four for defensive player of the year already. I thought really? he'd be like he's number not higher. one. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised he's not number one. Seriously. Yeah, I can't remember who what number one was. Maybe TJ? I'm actually, I'm going to look that up right now, so. It's do, TJ. I'm curious. Do odds like change off of one game like that? Oh yeah, a lot? I you guess obviously good, they want, have. I was going to bring but... this up later, but my favorite example is that Jameis Winston now is better MVP odds than Aaron Rodgers. We all knew this was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. <laughs> yeah, we all, every one of us. I'll tell you what. My Jameis and Matthew Stafford MVP betting odds. I'm really happy with those right now. I'm I'm feeling good about both of them. One of them got a hit. Yeah, Matt so... Stafford looks good, by the way. <sighs> Dude, he looks <laughs> so good. He looks so good. Yeah. Oh, that's just rookie. He had like, he had like two fifty-plus yard touchdown passes, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he had a perfect yeah, passer right. rating too. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, he torched. Yeah. yeah. He, that Bears team looks even worse than I thought they were going to be. That but, defense is so I worse the, than I, I expected. So these, I got the bet online odds. Uh, so it's giving me uh, shout out bet online. Shout out bet online for the future sponsorship. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aaron Donald is leader in the clubhouse. It's, five, it's then it's Miles Garrett and TJ Watt, and then right after that, Chandler Jones. No oh, shit. God. Damn. But uh, for MVP, uh, just saw it. So it's still like Pat Mahomes, but Tom Brady was, he was like five, six, seven. He jumped to number two. Dak is three ahead of Stafford, which I don't really get too much, but yeah, then you end up have, uh, and then seventh is Jameis Winston. It's about time. <laughs> it's about time. It's about I, t- I said 48 yards and five touchdowns will do to you. It was free money at plus 5,000. People should have jumped on it. <laughs> how much money did you put on that zach just like ten dollars yeah ten dollars yeah yeah but hey Shit. we'll see what a payout right what yeah a payout that right. would be my god oh uh, this pod will hear it if uh if Jameis ends up <laughs> ends up winning mvp what a world yeah but we um, might doing we if that if that hits we might doing might be doing a podcast from Jameis's uh, living room for Christ's sake. Yeah, yeah. You'll be able to pay him for his time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> kidding. Yeah, the fellas bowing down on crab legs, chopping it up, talking football. It'd be a good time. <laughs> did you, you know Jameis would be down? Did you guys see his post game interview? Or he was no, like, no. I, I talked to my trainer. My trainer said, "What do you say?" He just said, "Prepare." And it was like it's like he forgot. He like forgot. He's like, "What do you say?" He just said prepare. <laughs> it was so Everything funny. Everything James does is so naturally funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love him. Do you guys think, I guess, like, we'll talk about it. Fenner's wearing Packer. I'm wearing Packer. Like, do we suck? I'm wearing a shirt. Yeah. Do, do we, we suck? suck? I, 
I've I had this conversation with a lot of people at work today because a lot of them are Vikings fans and we're like, oh, you know, point and laugh at the Packer fan. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to like overreact. It obviously didn't feel good watching that game. But like, admittedly, like we, we are, a lot of the guys didn't play together like prior. I mean, they did last year, mm-hmm. uh, but they didn't yeah. in the preseason. You know what I mean? And I've. And that could be just my optimism that uh, that's 100% what it is, is like I'll wait until week two, week three, week four. And if we're still playing like this and Aaron Rodgers still looks the way he did this game um, or week one, then I will start to worry. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It it, it didn't bode well for my confidence uh, in my Super Bowl pick. <laughs> I will say this um, to the answer of do we suck? Maybe. We did last week. I, no. I've never like the whole situation with Aaron in the off season to come out like this. Mm-hmm. Now it to me it starts leaving a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, and it's not a good look. He he goes on like the Pat McAfee show today, and he's saying, "Oh, he threw that pick because he got kicked in the nuts." That doesn't explain the second one. Yeah. Like, and that looked he, like Bortles esque. Well, yeah, 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 it did. It was like twenty yards, Pat. Like you, you can't piss and moan like that and then come out and not score a single touchdown. You just can't do that. Yeah, yeah. So I, like, we were so bad that you can't even deny. Like, our defense might be so easy to cut through this year. Which it always is, so I think it'll just be a lot worse. Um, the Aaron playing this bad is what actually makes me think, oh shit. Like, like it was objectively terrible. He had a worse... In, if he dropped back and threw the ball at the ground every single play, he would have had a better passer rating than what he finished with. That's not something you say about Aaron Rodgers. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And when he plays this bad with the offseason he had, you have to mention it because it was fucking terrible. With that being said, if this is the Aaron Rodgers that we know, the biggest turnaround is going to be if we blow the doors off the lines this week mon- on Monday. If that happens, whatever, fine. I'll, like, it's a 17-game season. I'm not actually stressing out about week one where weird shit happens all the time. Plus, you look at 2014, it took us a while to get started in that season, too. And then we, like, went on a tear up 12 games straight and got on fire at the right time. Um, yeah. So I'm not too worried, but I think Aaron looks terrible. And he's got to blow the doors off the Lions next week. And I think we do. And also, while uh, while you were uh, making some great points there... Kind of, I kind of, uh, I wanted to do something and I did it. I bought the dip. Packers Super Bowl odds, I don't think ever getting lower. So oh, I just love a little it. down, a little scratch love down it. on that. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm clearly not out. I'm ready to go. Still feeling good. I'm doubling down. We'll be all right, I think. Maybe. It, it was Here's like. Here's another thing. Sorry. Um, real quick. Here's the thing too with, they, they ran like 15 plays on offense in the first half. So I can't imagine that's going to be too common in a thing where we're just long 14, 15 play drives on defense, milking clock in that Jacksonville heat. I think it just is a perfect storm. And they, and Aaron said it best, like in the post game, he said, you know, well, somebody say shit. I just lost my train of thought. Uh, basically he said he was the kick in the ass they needed. So I think that's true. That's what it seemed. It looked like a team that came out lackadaisical and that needed a kick in the ass. Yeah. 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 It definitely could be. Um, it. I was going to say, like, it was – that is, like, the most uh, – like, even though I'm not, like, that worried about it or whatever, that was, like, the most holy shit we might really fucking suck I've ever – like, I've had in the last, like, decade as a Packer fan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It was, like, jarring. What I will say is I don't know what it says about Matt LaFleur because this isn't the the first time the Packers have just come out, like, really flat 
And then after a game, Aaron says, oh, we, you know, basically to the tune of, oh, we just need to kick in the ass. We need a jolt. Like, that's not the first time. And I really don't understand why this continues to be an issue for the Packers, where it seems like to go full boomer that they read their own press clippings and yada, yada. It's it's weird. It's it's not something I'm, like, freaking out about, but it, it's not something I'm very comfortable I, with either. I think it has something to do with, like, I don't know. I want to say like the veteran leadership on the team, but I think that starts with Aaron Rodgers. So I think it does have something to do with Aaron Rodgers. And it's something that's kind of bugged me with Aaron Rodgers. Like over the last like five or six years is I like the whole relax thing. You know, I do really like that when that needs to happen, but like he never really seems to get like fired up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of just who he is. But I think that's part of the reason why the team might come out and look lackadaisical because it's like the leader of your team is like, all right, relax, right. chill out, we're yeah. fine. You know what I mean? But, like, it would be nice to see some, like, mm, let's fucking go right, out yeah. of him, you know? I think that's well, a big thing with, like, Brady, too. You see how, yeah. like, lit up he gets. Right. Well, and, too, and he is obviously the leader of the team face of the franchise for the past, like, 20 years. So if you – uh 10 i should say but if you roll in late like that after the off season you had you're the face you gotta be i would have liked to see him take a little more accountability after the game yeah like because you know i just said that about the defense you know and everything and not being able to get off the field but at the same time he didn't convert a single third down you got to take a little accountability for that and that would have been nice to see from the leader of your team and well, they and also, like being the leader of the team, if you don't show up, like what do you think that does to like the rest of the team's morale? You know what I mean? I don't know, but if you think that, yeah, you think that affects everybody else, you know, because you go from Aaron Rodgers, top three quarterback in the league, to like Jordan Love, a complete mm -hmm. unknown, you know. And my last or, little boomer take: uh, Aaron needs to cut that fucking mullet. Holy shit, that looks terrible. He looks. It looks like fine in a man bun. Five years old. Looked fine in the man bun in the post game presser. That's, I'll be honest. I like him looking old. I think it's funny. Keep it. I would. I, I did want to um, mention though with the uh, in a game with the previous MVP and a game including a top you know number seven betting out MVP. The best pass of the game. <laughs> no. Well, in Jameis, maybe, and maybe the best pass came from another future MVP of the game in Jordan Love. He made the best mm -hmm. pass of the game on that third down to Randall Cobb, who Aaron lobbied for. And did throw him the ball one And down. didn't get yeah, a single a fucking look. Down. That yeah. is a tough, tough, tough look. Somebody on that team had to get cut to make that happen. That's a yeah. tough scene. Yeah. Hope your friend being on the team makes you happier than someone who's on fucking unemployment right now, Aaron. Oh <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Yeah. I, it's, that's about all the Packer talk I can even stomach. That was, I'm I'm moving forward. We're we're on to Detroit, to Monday Nighter. I think that game is going to be a slaughter fest. I think at Lambeau in the bright lights, loud. we are going to kick Goff's ass up and down the turf. It's going to be yeah. it's going to be bad. It's going to be ugly. Boy, we better. Mm -hmm. Dan Campbell's going to be scared. Dan Campbell. I respect the crowd here at Lambeau. He'd be one of those guys, I bet. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, Dan Campbell had those boys ready to play at the end of the game last week. He didn't let him get out of it, so I will I will give him that much credit. Watch him just be a really good coach. Like Lions go like <laughs> like like nothing crazy, but like eight and nine, and it's like, whoa, Dan Campbell turned this round. Goff had a career year. <laughs> like like that'd just be really funny. That'd be the best uh timeline. So, I'm looking at the schedule for the week ahead of time. What game is is really sticking out to you, whether it's, like, the best game of the week or just, just kind of the most interesting game of the week, maybe matchup-wise or implications? Like, what's what's kind of standing out to you guys? Uh, for me, I think... I think the Chargers and Cowboys game, I think whoever... I think whoever wins that game, it's like, okay, they're they're, like, legit. That's how it. That's how it feels to me. That's a really good litmus test. I think that game too. That was that was the one I was like eyeballing. I uh, I did bet the Chargers. I'm feeling pretty confident about the Chargers, but 
that being said, like if the Cowboys do win that game, because Chargers look great last week. They mm-hmm. really did on the road mm-hmm. taking that win in Washington. Like that's not easy to do. So if the Cowboys can actually win that game on the road, it kind of just backs up what we saw on th- last Thursday because they look, you know, they way look good. better than anybody else thought they would against the Buccaneers. So if they show up, win that game, I think that's that says a lot about the Cowboys that I wasn't expecting. Yeah, and it's big because if they win it, it's it shows just how, like, serious they are. And, like, coming from, like, almost beating Buccaneers on the road to that – and yeah. but on the flip side, they lose. They start off zero and two. Eagles. I don't know who the Eagles play this week, but the Eagles might be two and zero. Like you, you kind of put yourself right away, kind of just like against the wall. And it's only week two in a seventeen game season, but still, like no one wants to start off zero and two and have mm-hmm. hopes to win the division. Um, Though, if there was any division, you could start zero and two. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's true. Uh, the Eagles play the Niners, by the way. So I think. The oh, Niners okay. Yeah. I'm interested no, no in that problem. game. I want to get to that game in a little bit. Um, but with with Chargers Cowboys, I think what I really want to see is Zeke. You can have the excuse of, oh, you know, they play Buccaneers. You know, they are they are maybe the best run defense in the league. But there were times you could watch Zeke, and it's like, like that one in particular. Yeah, <laughs> that one in particular where. They run that little speed option near the goal line. Dak pitches it to Zeke. Zeke needs to make one guy miss. I mean, we've seen it how many times over the years. With two yards to go, Zeke is making that play every single time. Yeah. But he didn't even – he wasn't even able to, like, get a move off. Like, and he was, like, stumbling. Like, it was yeah. really kind of concerning because it kind of is just is starting to back up a little bit of, like – what we kind of saw at the end of last year from him so i'm really fascinated to see how he does because i've been brewing on this take and i think i'm ready to unleash it that i think tony pollard at this point in his career is better than zeke i i was just about to say as a fantasy owner uh tony pollard scares the hell out of me as a (laughs) zeke owner in fantasy because tony pollard like i mean he didn't do anything amazing last week either but when he had the ball he looked a lot better than when zeke had the ball at least he has some juice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Zeke just doesn't look very good. Um, but, Fenner, I'm with you, though, on uh, cooked running backs. I yeah. feel you. Because I think <laughs> Saquon Barkley's cooked, too. Yeah, I don't know about that. Like, like what? Did you, I don't know how much of that game you ended up watching. I watched the ending of it, and um, the only stuff I saw looked pretty bad. He dropped one that literally hit both of his hands. Um mm-hmm. It could be Daniel just, Jones a better running back than Saquon oh, and God. I mean, he's got the stats to prove it. Um I, I'm not I figured his first two weeks were gonna be pretty bad, but week three, if by week three, because he's got a good matchup, I don't know who it is exactly, but he's not gonna do shit against the football team um this week. But by week three, if I'm not seeing something, then I'm more concerned than I am now. So not hitting the panic button yet. No, no. I'm yeah, happy he's getting his I, I wet actually reps agree with that because they play they play the Falcons. So if he can't get anything going against the right. Falcons, it's like buddy, right? Yeah. And this uh, this game was his first time uh, in contact he's had since last year because uh, he's he has, do any in training camp. No, he didn't do any, and uh, and he's not doing any this week either. Um, Probably for the best. Yeah, so for long term, it's good, but I think he's gonna have a really slow start. Yeah, getting out snapped by Devontae Booker is it's not great. I didn't I wasn't able to really see any of that game, mm-hmm. so I wasn't actually sure like I saw the stats obviously, but I wasn't sure like how Saquon looked or anything, if he looked like himself. From what I saw he didn't. But when, uh, I think that line sucks too, so I think that whole team sucks. They're they're so bad. They're New York so is just bad. a cesspool of bad football. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're even better than the Jets. I'm really honest because I I think Zach Wilson's a better quarterback than Daniel Jones, but that means – like, that is not saying anything because mm-hmm. Daniel Jones is in a tier of himself. He's he's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I – uh, Jets looked capable against the Panthers, so I'd say they're better. I'd say they're better than the than the Giants. 
low bar, but yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Who? Uh, what game are you looking forward to? Um, Cardinals Vikings only because I want to see the Cardinals string two in a row. If they can look impressive again, I'll buy into them a little more. And I love watching the Vikings lose. I think this this was almost a lock for me taking the Cardinals. I love watching the Vikings lose. I think they're such a piss poor team. They're such a miserable team to watch. And I can't wait for Mike Zimmer to get fired. I want to cash in. I want my $90 on this. So I'm really excited for that game. Well, on the flip side, uh, I need the Cardinals to lose because if they go 2-0, and I, I am not looking great on my Cliff Kingsbury first coach fired pick. So uh, they got to get to it and get losing. That's what I say. No, leave that to Mike Zimmer. That's why it was even better. Uh, the Bengals beating the Vikings was perfect for oh, my – for my uh, for my first coach fired. I'm worried though about Nagy. Real worry he's gonna sneak up and steal that one. Yeah. Okay, what what is the plan there? I, I I really don't get it. Like why? I how long do you keep this fucking straight up? Especially when like you he's going into the season and the general manager are going into this season. They know On like fire. this is it. This is the last chance yeah. you're gonna get. If they don't make an impression this season, like playoffs, they're donezo. So wh- how many games are you going to waste time with this Andy Dalton facade? Well, it's nonsense. And, and like even so, like they put him in. So like they weren't obviously willing to use Justin Fields. Like he ran mm-hmm. in a touchdown, right? Mm-hmm. But then they have that. They have that. I think it was like a fourth and four in the fourth quarter. And they don't decide to use Justin Fields when I feel like that's like a perfect situation to put him in. Cause if you need to run and get the first down, he can do that. Right. And he's a capable passer. At least I think he is. Um, Andy Dalton doesn't give you that option. He's not running for a first down. I, I, I hate to say that, but he's not. Andy Dalton stinks. You never Andy know. Dalton doesn't do a single thing better than Justin Fields. Not Nothing. one. Yeah. And he, you know, okay. Here, no, he might. Here's the one thing he might be able to do is control the flow of a game maybe kind of like read a defense even though he's obviously not very good at that we've noticed that in his career but like do you know how you get your other quarterback better at that by playing it's just a waste of everybody's time yeah he should have been benched at halftime they they had zero chance to win with him in that game i think uh they're on to something this week though because they play the Bengals, right yeah revenge Revenge game game. revenge game yeah so i get it who cares Revenge game. No, Andy's pissed. He's gonna light it up. It, well, um, it is Andy. Andy did say it is his time. So it's his team. What? Sorry, Justin. He literally proclaimed that this is his team. He's their really? leader. Yeah. What an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah. What oh, a yeah, fucking no, he asshole. Says, yeah. He said Justin's gonna have a great career, but it's my, my time. time. Yeah. And then he lays up <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole! What a fucking asshole! <laughs> Do you think he I got, believed- I- that it, move. I love that move. It's not going to be his team for long. You might as well own it while it is. Yeah, he's, yeah. Got, he's, he's got like maybe three more quarters left of his team. <laughs> oh, my God. I, like, And that's the thing. Like, I should be rooting for the Bears Go to frogs. be a complete disaster or whatever. But even, I'm, even I want to see Justin Fields. It's like, fuck. Yeah. It's just so annoying. Yeah. I just want to see him so he can kind of uh, buy Nagy some time. I really want Mike Zimmer gone. God, do I want him gone? Have you? Did you watch any of the uh, Vikings Bengals game? Mm-hmm. A little did you bit. See yeah. Mike Zimmer? He looks awful. Yeah, I'm surprised he's even. He looks like, like he put on like sixty pounds. I'm hey, surprised man. he's even. We've doing all been this. there over quarantine. Don't. don't yeah, I yeah. Guess. Yeah. I Listen, guess. it's. Uh... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be the last guy to give uh, give old Mike Zimmer a little flack for a little quarantine. Yeah, right? plus, yeah, yeah if you're going to make fun of him, just just look up his wife. I was going to say, he's got a, he's got a new woman. So. Remember that. Yeah, I, I, don't, look that up. I don't know what that is, but he somehow gets, like, supermodels. It doesn't ah. really. Okay, for Mike Zimmer. For <laughs> old ass Mike Zimmer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Zimmer. There's so- not a chance in hell that's his wife. Somehow Mike Zimmer uh, pulls above the above his weight. He just got a fucking hog. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> I don't know how much Mike Zimmer hog talk we're gonna be getting into. Probably, hopefully, not a lot. But 
Good for him, man. Yeah. Good for <laughs> Great him. guy. Great I would, personality. Uh, I would not mind uh, leaving the Minnesota Vikings. Seeing Mike to, Zimmer's uh, hog. To go. <laughs> <laughs> Next game. <laughs> oh. I got to be honest. I thought I, I would be really excited for this game. I am not excited in the slightest for Chiefs Ravens. Even if it is in no. Baltimore, the Chiefs no. are going to blow them out of the building. Yep. Yep. I thought about doing this in our uh, Survivor League. I thought about doing this game. They, oh my god. They're going to make them look like an XFL team. Especially seeing what happened last night. Oh my god. The Ravens, oh, the Ravens are going to be, I, I'm glad that I did not predict them in playoffs. Because I think this is a waste of a team. It's going down a bad rabbit hole. I hate to say it because I love Lamar, but... It's not looking good. Yeah. I, I hate to agree, but I, I wholeheartedly agree. It, I don't even know what it is anymore with that team, too, because it's like they got their wide receivers pretty healthy. I mean, they're missing Bateman, but for the most part, I mean, even Sammy Watkins looked okay last night. Um, Hollywood looked good. Hollywood did look yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially I thought he was going to be, like, really hurt because he had a – from what I understand, they said it was like a serious hamstring. Back, he looked incredibly. Yeah, he looked, yeah, he looked yeah, great. The healthiest. Yeah, but yeah, that team. That's that's a tough start to a season. Yeah. Oh my God, that game. That game was. Zach, can you just give me a quick breakdown of what happened in overtime? Because oh, yeah. I was trying to go to bed, and our group chat was just exploding with "What the fuck is happening right now?" <laughs> this was. The most insane. I don't know a game that has been like this flip flop, flip flop <laughs> in my fucking life. Because so it's overtime and Derek Carr. I don't know who it is. It, it might have been. Uh, it might have been Henry Ruggs. He hit, but it's it, it, like it looked like a touchdown. Oh, you're talking about the, the one that got him down to the goal. Line? Yeah, yeah. That was Brian Edwards. Brian Edwards. It, it looked like a very. Good, it looked like a game winning touchdown, and the Ravens are on. They're on the field. They're all. They're doing handshakes. They're like games over. Whatever. No, we look at it. It turns out like about a half yard, yard, half yard short. So they get them down there. But then you're thinking it's just like it's first and goal. You've got a yard. You're doing it. Uh, they do a Derek Carr sneak. That doesn't get it done. And I forget if they played another play or if it was on the next one. But basically, the offensive line. Offsides, they go back five yards. Yeah. So here we are. Here's what it was. Here's what it was. This is the weirdest shit I've ever seen. They're on the goal line, right? Derek Carr is hard counting. What are you? What are you gonna do? Yeah, get, get another couple get another inches. inches. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Are, what was going on? Yeah. You hard counted your own offensive line. It was so weird. <laughs> get a couple inches. So um, weird. Yeah. But here they are now. Like, now it's like they might not fucking score at all. Which, what do you know? Tipped pick. Ravens get it. Now it's the Ravens ball. The Ravens have one of the most pathetic three plays I've seen. And on third down, Lamar fumbles. Now, oh. Raiders ball. So it's like, okay, so the Raiders are going to win again. They send out their kicker. They've got the whole, it looks like they're going to kick it right away. Then suddenly, Harbaugh's like, no, no, no. Send the offense out. Send the offense out. And then it's like, okay, so they're going to run a couple, put the ball where they want to, get it a couple extra yards. Nope, Zay Jones wide open into the end zone. <laughs> what the fuck happened? This was it was so crazy. What and I was watching the Peyton and Eli stream, which totally suggests, by the way, it was way better than any of the uh, than anything I've seen Monday Night Football. Seeing you their see reaction, what they said? you see what they said at like the end of the game. They're saying Car to Zay Jones, yeah. one of the most iconic duos in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, the I whole. I might have to uh, get uh, ESPN Plus. Just, just I gotta tune into that. Yeah, it's really. Uh, it was so much. I liked it. I like it because you can also hear the uh, crowd noise a lot more. It feels because um, they take like all the the video and the noise that uh, from Monday Night Football, but obviously instead of their commentators, they have Eli and Peyton and whoever the guest is. But it feels like it's it's not mixed in as well, so you really hear like the field and the crowd. So I liked that about it. Okay. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Fun game. 
couldn't believe uh, Monday Night Football between Raiders and Ravens was this enjoyable. I should have just stayed up and watched it because my phone was buzzing every six fucking seconds anyways. It was so. worth it. It was a weird, weird game. Yeah. But, yeah. Any other games we're uh, interested in? Um... I, I actually am interested in Bill's Dolphins. So it's in Miami. And I think that game could be really good because they had a really good showing. They go into Foxborough, get a win. I mean, I don't care if Matt Jones is quarterback or not. That's still not a great, an easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. So I got to give them credit. I think they look pretty decent. And like I said before, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still here for Tua. I'm ready. I think he's going to be good. And the Bills are obviously coming off a super disappointing game. And if they go 0-2, who the hell knows what happens. So I think that one, that's going to be a really interesting game. Yeah. Uh, the Dolphins could take command of the division real quick. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I don't think the Bills start off 0-2. But if they do, then it's it's panic city. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. The uh, I ca- so this has nothing to do with like really any of the games or anything, but uh, my god, am I happy that Jerry Judy just has a high ankle sprain because that video looked oh my god, terrible. I don't know, oh. I don't know how he doesn't have like a completely dislocated ankle, right? Yeah, that looked awful. Yeah, when that came out, I was like. I was well when I saw it. I'm like, okay, out for the season. Like, yeah, that's like, immediately. I, I I turned to my dad and he has your, he, you know, I was like, I say goodbye to Jerry Judy. You know, right, he's like, what? Yeah. Showed him the video. He goes, oh Christ. Right. You know? Yeah. Like but even it, if he's not a hundred percent all year, just the fact that it's nothing more severe is a is a blessing for him. Right. It looked like he. I don't know. Like on the video, it looked like it. Like he like heard it twice. You know, like bef- like when he when his ankle turned, kind of, and then when the defender fell on it, it was like, oh Jesus, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 it was gross. Yeah. What about um? So, we've got we've got Broncos Jaguars this uh, week. Uh, who's uh, excited for the Jaguars again? Is if Urban I, Meyer stays as coach, like they're not winning a game, right? There's no well, way they can't literally play worse because you got blown out by the Texans. So there's no yeah, way to okay. go but up. I haven't. I hadn't made my survivor pick yet. I am picking the Broncos. I think the Broncos are absolutely going to route the Jags. Yeah, I, I agree. Because uh, yikes, yikes, yeah. yikes, yikes. This you... is not an indictment on Trevor Lawrence, but uh, he threw three picks to the Houston Texans. Uh he might he might double that up against the Broncos. Honestly. He... I will say he might be like a Jameis 30 for 30 uh, kind of season <laughs> only because he loves and will play hero ball anytime he can. And I think it's exciting. I think it's fun. I encourage that. I encourage yep. it with Jameis. I'm going to do it with Trevor Lawrence too. I don't think he's going to mentally process being on a team after never losing a regular season game in his football career Mm. to this. He might mentally, he he might like retire after one season. (laughs) Like like, super crazy. I'm actually worried about Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. You, I mean, this is like the worst possible situation to be in. It's the worst. Yeah. He's going to have to play hero ball because... They're going to be down by five scores every game. I mean, that team is going to be terrible. Yeah. Yeah, this is a disaster. I wonder. I, I'm just very curious what happens with Urban Meyer. He doesn't look happy. Have you seen some of the clips? It looks like the team doesn't like him already. It's This well, is a I mean, miserable. Of course they don't like Urban Meyer. You, you know what's going to happen? That's the least surprising thing of all time. You know what's gonna happen? I, I'm mark my words now. Urban Meyer, that's the next Ugh. USC just got rid of their coach after like one game. That he is the next coach of USC. Oh, I shit. thought you were gonna say he was gonna like fake having uh, health issues again. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know what you were <laughs> hinting at. Better. Yeah. I thought you were like heart attack, and I was like, what yeah, the fuck? I thought he was gonna have, have yeah. some more uh, heart problems. Yeah. Listen, he's gonna have some more heart problems. He takes a few more beatings like that. Good lord. Yeah. He, um, Poor Trevor Lawrence. Poor Trevor Lawrence. Poor James Robinson. 
Ah, fuck the rest of them. That's a tough scene. Uh huh. I like DJ Shark. I like DJ Shark a lot. Yeah. I like yeah. DJ Shark. I don't know how good he is. He's, I think he's better good. than being on the Jaguars. Yeah. There's not a lot of yeah. That's that's fair. <laughs> but I I can't watch that team. I mean, it's it sucks. It's miserable. It's not even fun bad. Like when it was like that Bortles season, mm -hmm. that was fun bad. Yeah. Because. You didn't expect them to actually be good anyways, yet they just put up numbers. This mm. is just going to be sad because it's going to be like such a waste of what should be a generational talent. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, yeah, I just wish he could have gone somewhere else. It sucks. This is a waste. This I would have been fine with him to the Jags had they not decided on the head coach they decided on. Like pretty much anybody else, you know? And that's Other than maybe thing. Adam Gaze. Like, what does that say about ownership, too? Because now I'm wondering, will Trevor Lawrence ever be in the right hands? Because right. if your ownership was willing to hire an Urban Meyer, I have no faith in you to make a hire for another good coach. Right. Yeah. Like, I I think this – I'm like, I know it is, it's been four quarters into this guy's career. I get it. But I'm, I'm hitting the panic button. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. I completely agree. All right, boys. Locks. Locks? What do we got? I'm going Buccaneers over Falcons. Falcons look like such a miserable team. Um, Falcons look like they're trying to get one of the top 30 picks in the draft next year. The fact that they couldn't put up more points against the Eagles and gave up like 33 or something. Um, and now you're going against the Super Bowl champions. Yeah, no, I'm going Buccaneers. Buccaneers over Falcons. Fair. Um, I, as I stated before, I am going to take uh, the Broncos over the Jags. That's going to be my pick in Survivor uh, for all the reasons we just said about the Jaguars. And, and I think the Broncos' defense is good. And I think Teddy Bridgewater is fine. Um. And I'm also going to take them, like, they're my pick and survivor. I also think they're going to cover the six points in the spread. So, It's only I six am... points? It's only six yeah. points. That might oh. be easy money. That might that be might. the easiest money. Let me let me do that right now, actually. I didn't know it was only six points. That seems ridiculous. Yeah. So, okay, they're a six-point favorite, but yet... So, my, the, the pick I was going to take was the Browns. I think I'm going to save them for our little survivor thing. Because they play the Texans. So the Texans are minus, or the Texans are plus 12 and a half at the Browns. But yeah, Broncos only minus six. That's crazy to me. Yeah. That's going to be the easiest cover of all time. I have no doubt. Famous last words. I'm, ah, fuck. You're I welcome. You <laughs> I wish you wouldn't have piggybacked on like that. <laughs> I'm not taking them. Actually, I'm not <laughs> oh, taking Oh, you aren't. I'm okay, I love it, that. But that's not my pick. Okay. I. I'm going to take Buccaneers over Falcons and Survivor this week. Fair. At home, there's not a chance in hell they lose that game. Yeah, that's such an easy lock. Because I was looking ahead on the schedule because I'm, I'm trying to forecast these picks a little bit. And I think I'm, next week I'm either going to go with Browns over the Bears or uh, – but they might – but unless they start Justin Fields, which I, I, don't, I don't know what he's going to look like game one, so I don't want to freak out, but – Cardinals uh, going into Jacksonville next week is seeming Ooh. very strong. <laughs> yeah. Cross that bridge when we come to it. But I, I think I'll go Buccaneers this week. Yeah, I go with, wrong with Tampa Bay Tom. Yeah. All right. That, I mean, that it really pisses me off how good he looked week one, man. <laughs> Looks insane. I don't even get I mad about it anymore. I don't think he'll ever age. I think he'll play forever. Yeah. I don't even want him to retire at this point. Play into your 50s. Like, yeah, I dude, fucking like run already... it up. Win 12 Super Bowls, for fuck's sake. Right. Like, I feel like I'm already older than Tom Brady. Like, I'm going to make a big mistake. I'm eating, like, part of what I'm eating tonight, I'm having tomatoes with it. Oh. So I'm already not on the Tampa uh, Tom diet, clearly. And I think that, man, I'm I, I'm going to, like, I'll be by the time I'm 50 years old, he's still going to look the same. I'm going to surpass him in age. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's in real shame. body age, yeah. yeah. It's a shame. He'll be going for his twentieth ring. 
<laughs> I saw side by side of what Aaron Rodgers looked like with that mullet versus Tom Brady. It is insane. Oh my yeah. god. Aaron looks twenty years older than Tom Brady. What the fuck is going on? Tom looks like he could be a rookie. Yeah. It does, yeah. All right. Any last thoughts for the people? No. no, the uh, the people know where we stand, and they're going to be ready to watch an, an interesting slate of football. So we'll see what the people have uh, if they agree with us. I think a lot. Uh, I think a lot will because we have nothing but right takes. Absolutely, Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, comment your lock, whatever you want to see from the Farmcast next. Uh, follow us at the Farmcast on all social media. Um, and yeah, let's get out of here. I'm sick as fuck. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you on the next episode of the Farmcast. Bye.